a national scheme is underway to improve Aboriginal access to university education and consequently help them compete more equally for better managerial positions. Graham Kavanagh reports on MOSA, the Monash Orientation Scheme for Aborigines. Today's lecture is on male and female roles and um, you may not be aware but there's been a lot of recent interest in this in the areas of anthropology and sociology um, and we've already looked at different sorts of roles and I think roles are easier to study because you can actually observe what's happening, you can see what people are doing. Two months into the university year at Monash and these adult age Aborigines are being given their chance to gain tertiary qualifications. A chance that did not materialise for them when they were teenagers at various schools around Australia. Now, many years later, in their own classroom with their own teachers, they are undertaking studies in four subjects, history, anthropology and sociology, numeracy and communication skills. Satisfactory passes will guarantee them first year places in 1985 in the Monash faculties of arts or law. It's a male-dominated society and they wouldn't have given all the information. Yeah, I think themselves. you're talking about Aboriginal society where a lot so of the information is secret yeah, to, yeah, and so separate from women. Yeah, the running of the society is more male dominated. There is a considerable degree of Aboriginal content in the orientation course to provide education that has meaning and to motivate the desire in them to succeed. Students who perhaps haven't done any reading and writing for a long time and dislike school, um, it might be nice to have some Aboriginal content to, so that they would enjoy reading about it and things like that. But um, I think the subjects are also chosen on the basis of um, good backing for university. Anthropology and sociology and history can be carried on. English is a must to get up the skills and uh, numeracy, basic numeracy is required by many subjects uh, to do basic statistics courses at, at, in an arts degree. Special treatment is essential because when it comes to a university education, Aborigines are at a great disadvantage. A university campus has no relevance to their culture. It can be a strange and foreign place filled with loneliness and isolation. It is a place also that can be ruled out of bounds because of the economic cost of a tertiary education. And there is the obstacle too of the legacy of discrimination that Aboriginal people endure. But whatever the cause, the end result is that Aboriginal people are paying a high price for the lack of educational opportunity. I think it's, it's, it's obvious that Aboriginals have been able to maintain uh, positions in, in management or in professions uh, outside of those, those large Aboriginal organisations. Um, most of the Aboriginal organisations provide positions for Aboriginals and it's, it's easy for them to progress through on the basis of not having um, university degrees or qualifications. Um, top management generally does require tertiary training. Um, we don't have doctors, we don't have lawyers, we don't have economists, we don't have linguists. These professions can only be gained at, at a university level. So what is it hoped that MOSA will achieve? To fill just that gap, uh, to be able to provide more uh, academically trained or tertiary trained people to work in top management um, or for, for them to be able to take part in, in professional life in, in the, the wider community. Um, MOSA doesn't aim to train Aborigines just for Aboriginal organisations. Its intent is to provide professionals for the Australian community. So here on the campus of Monash University, an initial batch of students is receiving the personal tuition and support that is required for academic success. And there are no barriers to their introduction to university life. All the facilities available to undergraduates are available to them. Facilities such as the Monash Gymnasium where Gary Martin works out. Born in Mildura and an accomplished Australian rules footballer, he is married with a four-year-old daughter. And his application last year to the Department of Education for a study grant led to his introduction to the MOSA scheme. Did you ever think that you would actually get to university? Never. Never, not at all. Was there ever anything that occurred to you as, as something to do? Um, I mean, how did you feel when you heard that a, a course like MOSA was available? Oh, I thought it was pretty good. It's about time that um, Aboriginals had the opportunity to go to university because at Monash, I think there's only ever been three or four gone through, and with this scheme, there'll be um, eight of us all at once. And that's... Um, you know, doubled the figures in 12 months to what's been through in 20 years. 
What about your own ambitions? What, uh, what are your hopes? I'd like to study law next year if I can get high enough marks, but we need to uh, get a credit in every subject, which um, is pretty, well, I see it's pretty difficult, but uh, I'll be giving it a try. Also giving it a try is Brian McNamee, who was born in Darwin and who was accepted for the Mosa course along with his married sister. Brian's aim is to study for a law degree. As far as I can see, the Aboriginal people um, always, nearly always are in conflict with the, with the law in this country. Um, see, nearly every, every Aboriginal person you, you meet knows someone or know, knows someone that, that has been in trouble with the law. So if they had an Aboriginal lawyer, they'd have a better chance of proper rep representation in a court of law. And uh, they'd know that an Aboriginal lawyer would be working for them. Yeah. And they'd have interest at heart. The MOSA scheme is doing more, though, than providing classrooms and facilities for relaxation and leisure. It's also helping out in areas like childcare, assisting Jeanette Bibby, whose youngest son, Brandt, is three years old and now a part-timer at the Monash Student Creche Cooperative. By the way, Brandt had a sleep today. He was really tired and he really needed it. So he's had one today, OK? Good. Fine. Originally from Geraldton in Western Australia and a trained nursing aide married to a Victorian and living here Fine. for nearly eight Fine. years, Fine, Jeanette sees in the Moses scheme a welcome chance to further her education. There's not very many kids, not very many um, students sort of my age that had the opportunity to go to school um, right up to the high standards and uh, it was just uh, something that you sort of felt you had to get out and get a job since you turned 16. And this is good because it sort of closes that gap if you wanted to do something extra. But there is a price to that something extra. None of these students is having a university education handed to them on a plate. They will have to prove, first of all, that they are of higher school certificate standard and capable of earning their degrees. And in the process, they must survive on very little money indeed. Aboriginal study scholarships provide them with just $76 a week, which isn't much money when you consider that several have young families to support. Well, we hope in the future that, that the, the Ab study scholarships will be changed to take care of um, working parents uh, who are coming back into the, uh, into the study field. Uh, but we, we warned them at the beginning that this is what they're up against. Uh, and so they know they must make that adjustment before they come in. Uh, the Ab Study Scholarships just provide them with, with sufficient um, to be able to pay for their fees and, and uh, to cope with basic necessities. It certainly isn't anything that they can live a luxurious life on. Um, most itself tries to provide a supplementary fund so that we try to supply them with um, uh, some monies each month that will help them overcome difficulties. Um, but uh, the, the candidates know from the beginning that if, if they want to do it, and this is part of the motivation process, they've got to give up a hell of a lot. The MOSA students were selected for their potential and their capabilities, and also for what the planners of the scheme call their stickability, their determination to see not only the orientation year through, but also the years of ongoing study towards a degree. Certainly the determination that is required is a bond that ties all the MOSA students together, that gives all of them the will to succeed. At this early stage there's not much interaction with other students at Monash, but aspiring law student Fiona Hill believes that that will change in time. At the moment we're a bit close, um, I think because we all, we all come from different areas of Australia and we seem to lean on each other a lot. Uh, I think as we get a bit more confident as individuals being on in the university here, I think we'll be able to branch out a little bit and then come back together for the, that, the support, the basic type of support that we'll need. But I think we'll be able to branch out and not rely so heavily on each other. In the seven weeks that you've been here, what would you say is the greatest thing that you've gained in that short space of time? In seven weeks, Mm. A lot of confidence, I think, because I'm not alone in my ambitions, in what I'd like to do. I may not do exactly the same things the others might want to, but just the fact that there are others who feel as I do about education and who are, I feel, equally determined as I am to see this through. We'll be bringing you reports on new educational and training schemes for young and old in the future. Till next time, tisbuhun alaher. Good night.
Friday morning as we roll into another weekend. A group of proud university graduates will don cap and gown in Melbourne later this month to accept their degrees. So what, you might ask? Well, the difference is that these graduates are Aborigines. And just a few years ago, the prospect of earning a uni degree was a dream that they would think n might never come true. Sally Neighbour has the story. For the vast majority of Australia's Aborigines, university education has always been an impossible dream. 98% of Aboriginal students never even finish secondary school and in Australia's entire history only about 30 have attained university degrees. But now all that is changing and quickly. The reason? A revolutionary new program codenamed MOSA. MOSA is the Monash orientation scheme for Aborigines. Now that, what that really amounts to is a program which allows Aboriginal people who've got no formal entry qualifications for university, in fact, who have never completed secondary schooling at all, to have access to university education. Introduced four years ago, MOSA is a year-long orientation program that prepares mature-age Aborigines with only limited basic education for the challenge of university. Most of the students only ever reached year 10. One never made it past third grade. He's now studying law. We basically emphasize Koori identity in all of the subjects that we teach, even in mathematics. We do the same in subjects like history, um, uh, anthropology, sociology and English. In English we emphasize uh, Koori authors, poets and playwrights. Um, and of course we have what we call our communication skills. So we, we, we teach things like how to research in a library, how to um, write essays, how to develop um, data retrieval systems um, for examinations, practice exams, etc. and so forth. How important do you see MOSA as having been for you? A lot of Aboriginal people uh, get very frustrated with, with education system and, and every other sort of system and institution that's around and uh, they they need they need a strong a strong support system and i think mosa mosa does that mosa has been a stunning success of the 45 students who've gone through 30 or 66 percent are now partway through their degrees gary martin is proof of that success four years ago he was a truck driver who left school in year nine now he's in the third year of an arts law degree and preparing for a year-long trip to the University of British Columbia in Canada to study Indigenous people and their rights. Do you think you would have got where you are without MOSA? Definitely not. We've got to bear in mind that this is a very unique program. Um, I had an opportunity to have a look at other universities and what sort of um, facilities they made for uh, Indigenous groups or Native groups and there's nothing in the world like this one. This is really unique and uh, out of all the other systems this is definitely the most successful. MOSA has expanded this year to encompass an additional two-year orientation course leading into science, medicine and engineering. Later this year the first group of Aboriginal graduates will collect their degrees. For people who've largely missed out on the benefits of Australia's education system, they've come a long way. If you took any group from our community who'd been educationally disadvantaged, uh, who had never completed secondary school, in some cases hadn't even begun secondary school, told them they had one year to get ready for university, you would not expect any group to do that well. Add to that, in many cases, linguistic and cultural barriers, which have to be left, and uh, I think you, you can see this an enormous achievement on the part of these students. One thing it's taught me is to hold my head up high. I'm not ashamed of being Aboriginal anymore. I mean, I was never ashamed of it, but there was something there, you know, sort of like you felt people were looking at you and you were less than them. But it's not there no more. I mean, I'm just as good as the next person that comes along. 
Mm, nice to kick off the morning with a good and positive story. Well done, Sally.